you get a power play goal, you get a power play goal, you get a power play goal. Power play goals like they're going out of style as the Minnesota Wild pick up another preseason win this time over the Colorado Avalanche. We'll discuss what we liked, what we didn't, and if the special teams is fixed today on Locked on Wild. You're Locked on Wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What's happening, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast. Part of the Locked On Sports Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Wild your first listen each and every day. And just as a reminder, Locked On Wild is free and available wherever you listen to your podcasts. On today's episode of Locked On Wild, we recap a 5-2 win for the Minnesota Wild against Colorado in preseason game number two. We'll talk special teams. We'll talk the line combo of Jost, Steele, and Boldy. We'll talk about Philip Gustafson's wild debut, all the things we liked as we continue to navigate through the preseason. My name is Seth Topol, host of Locked on Wild, veteran Minnesota sports content producer with well over a decade's worth of experience covering your favorite Minnesota sports team. A 5-2 to win for the Minnesota Wild in their second preseason game. And uh, a chippy one, to say the least, as I think the Avs broadcast mentioned near the end of the game that the uh, Avalanche took 10 minors over the span of the uh, entirety of the game. And you'd expect nothing less than that. There are a lot of players for both teams playing and trying to earn spots. And so they're showing that fire. They're showing that intensity, that passion. And a lot of times that boils over to uh, to some fights, to some scuffles. And um, that made this game a little more choppy. Uh, but there still were plenty of good things to uh, to take away from this one. And we, uh, we laid it out right at the top for you. Special teams obviously had a good day with uh, three more power play goals. Thought that line combination of Sam Steele, Tyson Jost, and Matt Boldy did some good things as well. And then you had Philip Gustafson, who had his uh, wild debut and uh, had some uh, pretty solid goaltending that he provided. So we'll talk about all that. We're going to start, of course, on the offensive side because who else playing his former team? Tyson Jost picks up two, not just goals, two power play goals. Um, in this one and that line combo of Sam Steele, Matt Boldy, and Tyson Jost looking really, really good. Now, there's stuff to clean up. Of course, there's stuff to clean up because you take away the power play opportunities and by and large, the Avalanche, especially early on in this game, uh, the Avalanche really dominated the five-on-five play to the point where um, uh, the Avs broadcast mentioned it like right as the wild got their fourth goal that uh, the wild had something like five, um, five on five shot attempts to that point for the entire game. You'd expect that to be the case, missing your top line, your Kaprizov line, not having the, the grief line, which is much more of a possession line themselves. You'd expect that, the five-on-five numbers would not look as great when the boldy line is not out there on the ice. And so, obviously, some of these things are going to be cleaned up as the uh, the season gets closer and as the season gets underway. But really good showing for that top line. And we will get to his player expectations episode between now and the start of the regular season, which is rapidly approaching. But... um, A really good opportunity this year for Tyson Jost to step into an elevated offensive role and produce to get an opportunity above that fourth line to get an opportunity. And if he does something with it, that's going to lead to an expanded role for him. He could be one of those guys this year 
much like the Wild had in uh, Marcus Foligno, Ryan Hartman, you name it, some of those career season guys stepping into more elevated offensive roles. Tyson Jost could be that for the Wild here this season if he's able to make the most of uh, an additional minutes type opportunity. But Dean Evison said it at the start of training camp. We got to see it in full swing today. The chemistry level for that grouping uh, is pretty good so far, to say the least. You've got Sam Steele centering that uh, that line combo. I know he had a couple of turnovers that essentially directly led to the goals for the Avalanche. So it wasn't a uh, a perfect day by any means for uh, for Sam Steele, but thought he uh, he really did some good things offensively to uh, to help out his line mates. What can you say about Matt Boldy that we haven't already said? He just is such a good visionary with the puck. We'll talk about what he was able to do on the power play here in a little bit. And Tyson Jost taking advantage of some dynamite feeds from Sam Steele through the crease to uh, to give himself an opportunity to um, to collect those couple of goals. That's another wrinkle to the power play that was working for the Wild, and Tyson Jost took advantage of it here uh, in this one tonight. But thought that top line did a great job of setting the pace, setting the tone for this game. They uh, they had plenty of opportunities, plenty of chances, and um, you know some really good things to take away from this second preseason game for the Minnesota Wild uh, as we continue to try to just try to kind of get some things rolling through the rest of the preseason and on towards the uh, the regular season. I think, um, and it is early. I think this is a line combo that could work uh, for the Wild. Um, at points throughout the season, depending on how the rest of the variables play out. Obviously, would love to have Marco Rossi get bigger opportunities, and I'm sure he will. I just, at this point, it, it's up to Dean Evason as to what the line combos look like and who plays where and, uh, and what they end up doing. I, I understand, or I would not be surprised, if the desired beginning of the season is to just try to ease Rossi into it a little bit. And as he shows he's ready for stuff, then you gradually start to work him back up. If that's the way that they play it, you know, this, this line looked really good tonight. And so I think you'd feel comfortable with seeing more out of them through the rest of the preseason and maybe rolling with it into the regular season as well. But you know, all in all, a, uh, a great one. And we haven't even discussed the goaltending yet because uh, Philip Gustafson got his wild debut in in this game. And so we'll discuss what Gustafson did, gave up a couple of goals, but we'll take a look at what led to those goals as we continue to recap a 5-2 to two win for the Minnesota Wilds next here on Locked on Wild. BetOnline.net is your number one source for football betting info this season. You can find all the latest player developments, plus team matchups, news, podcasts, and in-depth articles and analysis on every game you can find. And as always, Bet Online remains your continued source for all of your sports wagering information with live betting and up-to-the-minute scores for every sport out there. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your favorite games and events, including Major League Baseball, MMA, boxing, and golf, and soon, the NBA and the NHL as well. So head to betonline.net or use your mobile device to learn more. All of that can be found at BetOnline, where the game starts. Continuing today's episode of Locked on Wild, once again, thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. For your second listen today, Locked on NHL podcast as we continue to gear up for the start of the regular season. Locked on NHL is free and available wherever you listen to your podcasts. Let's talk a little Philip Gustafson as uh, Gustafson played the first half of the game and uh, ended up having, I believe it was 25 saves, 27 opportunities, did give up a couple of goals, but let's look at um, how they went down. 
So the first goal of the game that the Avalanche scored was literally 20 seconds in. And uh, just a an odd man rush by the Avs, and uh, they were able to cash in on that opportunity. Uh, kind of a disjointed, discombobulated start that uh, that led to the Avalanche goal. And so, yes, ideally you would like your goalie to make the save in that situation to give your team the opportunity to catch its breath, get their feet under them. But um, in that situation, he was not able to. And so the Avs took a one nothing lead. Now the team responded and then some, making it a 2-1 to one game. Right away in the second period, 19 seconds in, a turnover in the defensive zone, turnover by Sam Steele like right in front of the net. And uh, another odd man opportunity for the Avs. The initial shot didn't go, but the rebound did. I'm getting the sense, and again, anytime you turn the puck over right in front of your goalie, it's you you ask your goalie to do the best they can to uh, to try to at least stop the initial opportunity. So not one that I'm going to necessarily fully blame Gustafson on on that second goal. I am noticing a pattern, though, that I'm hoping the Wilds decor will be able to assist with because this was something that was a problem with Marc-Andre Fleury at points, and that is those just absolutely tantalizing morsels, those rebounds that uh, then end up being kicked out. And because of just where they're at on the ice, end up being kicked out to opponents. You know, that was that was how the first goal was scored. It was a rebound right out in front and the uh, the Avs did what they would do, did what any team would do in that situation and they just kept peppering at home. They were able to get one pass. But Gustafson had a um a few other rebounds that uh that were kicked out to right in front of the net and so that's something I'm sure I'm sure he had a lot of of butterflies and was amped up to make his wild debut in this one. So some of that I'm sure can be attributed to just being excited and you would hope that that will be shored up a little bit, but it does seem at least early on, like both wilds goalies are going to tend more to give up those big rebounds than a guy like say Cam Talbot would not say Talbot wouldn't give up those big ones himself, but it seems like there's more of a tendency with these two goals to give up those big rebounds. And so as an extension of that, while defense is just going to have to keep an eye out for them right in front of the net, you know, on the penalty kill, if you can get that puck right out in front, you clear it and uh, you live to fight another day. And that just comes with, you know, the learning curve for these two goalies and with Flurry. Being in Minnesota again after coming here at the trade deadline last year gives him some continuity with these guys. So that's something hopefully that will be worked on through the rest of the preseason so that either the team is ready for it or Fleury maybe is able to um, help him out a little bit himself. But uh, all in all, I was uh, I was impressed with what Gustafson was able to do in his first action here in the preseason. As I mentioned, 25 out of 27 shots, and he faced a bunch as the Avalanche, like we discussed, Avalanche in the five-on-five five capacity really dictated play um, as they do against so many opponents and hardly any of their regular players really uh, played much time in this game. So as you'd expect, the Avs really, uh, really did dictated play in the five on five, but Gustafson did a really good job of not letting things snowball and allowing the wild to stick with the avalanche until they started to take advantage of some of those uh, power play opportunities that the Avs just kept handing out as the game went on. And they were able to uh, distance themselves in the second period and then uh, glide to the victory down the stretch after Gustafson. We got to look at Zane McIntyre, and Zane did some nice things. He had some good saves uh, for the Wild there down the stretch the rest of the way. So uh, a good job by both goalies, and that capitalizes off of what we saw from uh, Marc-Andre Fleury and from Jesper Wallstead as well. So through two games, 
I think we've seen some nice things from all four goalies that have gotten into the action uh, here uh, so far. We know who the primary two are going to be, but it's nice to see you know, your goalie of the future in Jesper Wallstead and somebody who, in the event that uh, there are some injuries to the NHL club this year, we could very likely see Zane McIntyre at some point, whether it be in a backup capacity or hopefully not to the point where he would start. But uh, it's nice to know that he showed some good things uh, here in this one tonight. And again, all of this being said, knowing full well that we're talking about a preseason game in which the Wild had like one and a half of their normal lines and the Avalanche had a bunch of younger players playing as well. So a lot of this needs to be taken at face value, but still we're uh, we're recapping what we saw from that preseason game and so you know we're we're throwing all that out here with this one. We do want to talk about the one other thing that was intriguing to watch in this game, that, of course, being the Wild special team. So to finish up today's episode, recapping a 5-2 to two win for the Wild in preseason game number two, let's talk power play. We'll do that after this here on Locked on Wild. Final segment of today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. For your second listen, make sure to check out the Locked On NHL podcast so you get the full lowdown of everything going on throughout the NHL all in one place. Locked On NHL is free and available wherever you listen to your podcasts. Three power play goals for the Wilds, and uh, two of them were from Tyson Jost. Brandon Duhame also had one himself. So it's fixed, right? Uh, th- shout out to Jesse Pierce who asked the uh, the tough question after uh, the Wild's first preseason game in that uh, the Wild did not allow a power play goal themselves. That's now two games in which they haven't. And they scored on the power play. So special teams is fixed, right? And Dean even said so. He said, oh yeah, we uh, we got it all fixed. We got all the answers. Um, we're, we're taken care of for the rest of the year. Let's look a little bit though at uh, some of the things that we noticed from the power play here tonight. Now, again, preseason game, a lot of the pieces that you would normally have on that PP1, not in action for this one tonight. But what did we see? We saw Matt Boldy running the top power play unit. And a lot of the action that we saw from Boldy was funneled through that uh, that left faceoff circle in the avalanche zone. So you got Goligoski at the top, just uh, working the blue line. Uh, they would funnel the action towards Boldy and you know, you, the wild have somebody behind the net, which is pretty standard. So none of this is really groundbreaking at this point, but you get it to the player on the ice with the best vision, which is Boldy. And you allow him a couple of things. You allow him to step up, take a shot, or you allow him to try to find a feed for somebody else. And I thought the puck movement for the Wild with the power play this evening was very good. The other couple of things that really just disappeared for this Wild team when their power play was at its worst was players in front of the net capitalizing on rebound opportunities at shots from, you know, not not the absolute top of the zone. You've got guys shooting from the middle to in, middle to in towards the net of the avalanche zone. And in the case of uh, of the one of the power play goals, I think it was the second power play goal for the Wilds, you had a pass to Sam Steele on one side of the net. All the attention went to him, and so he's able to just glide the puck through the crease to Tyson Jost who's just waiting and I'm glad that um I'm glad that Jost was able to capitalize from that spot because as a golfer myself I can't count the number of times that I have missed those like two footers for birdie par bogey whatever but you you get an opportunity like that and you're looking at it and you're like and sometimes 
bad things happen in those situations. So glad that did not end up being the case for Jost here tonight. But again, getting back to it, you know, you've got Steele on one side of the net. All the attention goes to him. So you leave yourself another opportunity with somebody else right in front of the net to divert and capitalize. And the first power play goal was Tyson Jost taking advantage of a rebound and a tap in. So having presence in front of the net, moving the puck around, and Boldy, to his credit, did a really good job of distributing. You know, there were a couple of times where he stepped up and shot the puck, and the Wild were able to control the rebound and get it back out, but thought the movement of the puck was great, thought Boldy was very decisive in uh, what he wanted to do with it. And so those are super encouraging signs because once you get the full lineup put together, a lot of what Boldy was doing will be done. Also having Kirill Kaprizov out there in some instances. Now, we talked about what the power play units may look like. Jury's still out on that. But main point being is that regardless if, uh, if Boldy is on the second power play or the first power play, a lot of what we saw is going to translate to what Kirill Kaprizov will be doing. And with Kirill Kaprizov comes a potential for Matt Zuccarello to be one of those outlet passes. It just, it looked much more like a functioning power play than what we saw down the stretch where the Wild would simply just pepper it around the perimeter, not even be able to enter it into the offensive zone. And uh, it just... Bad times all around. Like you, you should never really ever give up a shorthanded shot opportunity on a power play. Became commonplace down the stretch last year. So hopefully that hopefully that's past us. And uh, all in all, it leads to a uh, a solid win for the Wild here uh, in this one tonight. Again, five to two the score. Two goals from Jost. You had a goal from Vladislav first off. You had a goal from Brandon Duhame. And um, there's another player that I'm forgetting the final goal of the night. But uh, those were the four that uh, those are the four that that counted that mattered and you know, solid showing for a lot of guys who have opportunities to really um, elevate their play here uh, this season. So all in all leads to a good win. I would imagine, I don't know, it'll happen sometime tomorrow, sometime Wednesday. Uh, we'll get further cuts from this Minnesota Wild roster. Uh, had another round of cuts. The roster now at 45. Really not notice, really no notable cuts. A lot of uh, PTOs uh, for this Wild team through training camp, and those guys all are going to report to Iowa. So, Nobody really has notably been sent down yet. Um, and so that means that there are a lot of guys that still are getting some value out of this training camp and uh, are pushing for spots to fill out the uh, the back end of this roster. So we'll keep an eye on that. We've got another episode coming later today. Uh, this will be the Marcus Felino season expectations episode because that one's going to be fun to dive into because we got to figure out a couple of things with Marcus. And so we'll, uh, I'll leave that as a little tease. We'll dive into that later here today, but that'll take care of our wrap up of a five to two win for the Minnesota wild over the Colorado avalanche in preseason game number two. So uh, that will do it. Make sure you are sticking close to locked on wild all week long. So we can keep you up to date on all things, Minnesota wild, whether it be roster moves, game recaps, or other things in between. We have you covered every single way, and you can find us free of charge on YouTube. So make sure to follow us there and turn those notifications on so you don't miss out on a single episode all week long. You can also find us on your favorite podcast platforms. We have new content coming all week long, every Monday through Friday, as part of the Lockdown Sports Podcast Network.